Are you finding um, with the leaks around town a bit um, that happening in the same place, like a little bit further along the pipe? Are they are they connected or are they just in odd places around town? Um, it was recently quite odd, <laughs> <laughs> um, but there will be um, leaks on lots of the pipes and areas and stuff. But I'm not sure of any particular pattern around them. I don't know. No, I don't know that I'm aware of. No, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 Yeah, we can back to them if there's any emerging patterns. Yeah, okay. There's a, there's a water pressure going up through the Manga Bench Park, obviously to the reservoir. Is that increased or is it? No, it's the heat from the reservoir, so it's, yeah. so it's controlled by the head. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, 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 gosh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Um, Obviously, we've been doing quite a lot of work around um, a fair number of uh, leaks across the district. Um, and there's been quite a substantial amount of work done by Wellington Water on, on those across the three towns. Um, yeah, it's really good uh, progress, I think, on, on those in terms of the recovery and, and just to stop some of those leaks. I guess some of them aren't um, always visible as well. So, um, I guess from a public perception point of view, um, we are fixing lots of leaks, but maybe not the smaller ones on the surface. I think is something to to think about. Um, I can't I can't remember. Do we have any percentages around the water losses? Any changes around those? Or uh, I don't have those numbers on me, but I can get back to you. I think I'm good. Yeah. Um, so uh, part of the government stimulus package was to do one of our towns as a trial with regards to. Uh, interim metering to identify quickly leaks. How's the trial gone on, or is that completed, or uh, status? Well, uh, the, um, at the moment, uh, we're just working through the how we're going to use the fiscal stimulus money because we are having a, you know, we're, we're having to cover increased uh, costs on the network, and so we're just talking through with your offices about how we um, how we. We'll have to use more fiscal stimulus to do that. Uh, and then when that's all balanced out and agreed through the June 2022, then we can re you know, just make sure the other things we want to do, um, we're clear about the scope of all of that, but some things we'll have to stop because of the amount of extra money we have to put in. Yeah. So so you and I think we've been in a position to probably report that in a couple of weeks, won't we? Yeah. But um, that's doing that productively, they're good conversations, you know, resetting that. And we're also part of the fiscal stimulus. Uh, we're also reallocating uh, more resources to land development uh, because across the um, across our all six owners, we're experiencing uh, about eighteen percent, I think, is on average um, increases in, uh, in contact with us over approving um, land development. So we're going to have to resource up again to deal with that. And of course, that was against the prediction post COVID of everything going down. So. Put us a little bit out of uh, whack on that. Could you just qualify what you mean by land development? So when you so you 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 permit land development in South Wairapa District Council, yep. and our job is to give you advice around what are the infrastructure needs to support that development. Right. But we also kind of tick offs for every individual um, uh, individual subdivision around the water accessing path. Um, and you know I don't know what I don't actually know what the trend in grey ten is, but the you know, the trend at the high level um, over all six owners is a lot more contact from us, uh, meaning that there are a lot more smaller developments going on than larger ones. And so that's the bit that we're struggling to keep up with. Okay, so you mean like subdivisions, for example, behind existing dwellings? Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, people you know, <coughs> they dump, you know, take a house with them, put two on and stuff like that, whereas before we might have been dealing with large developments, you know, 30 or 40 sections. It's, yeah. it's, 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 Really big increase in small development. It's interesting to note that too. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to suddenly have um, skipped a paragraph in the report in the um, the Q2 performance report was, was mentioned at one page five of, of the area, and I may have skipped over that. So um, uh, the the performance report is actually attached to appendix one. Yep. Um, so, so apologies, just taking a slight step back to. Um, to that, um, one of the appendices anyway, um, that has the, the land performance report. 
Um, sorry, I'm sorry. That one. Colin, did you want to talk to the forest report? I actually wanted to just have a, a, a general chat. Could I do that at some stage rather than answer questions? Would I be able to? Is it around you? Yeah, fine. Because, um, you know, you, I, I come over to the other one, um, so I wouldn't mind just having a general discussion with you if that's all right. Yeah. So, um, so, you so probably want to uh, start with, you know, um, you know, pending, you know, the, you know, the discussions you'll be having um, as councils around, uh, you know, the government's, uh, you know, water reform agenda. And so a part of that plank is the introduction of uh, Tomata ROI on the 1st of July, uh, who's, who are the drinking water regulators and their job is to uh, uh, set standards and implement those standards over drinking water and to monitor the discharges of wastewater and stormwater across, um, across all councils. Um, and Wellington Water has done a, um, a small reorganization of its structure. We've created a director of regulatory services <laughs> and that role is to ensure that we are fully ready um, for a 1 July start by um, the regulator. Uh, and, you know, as a general rule, uh, Wellington Water hasn't experienced a lot of hard regulation. Uh, we, you know, the nearest we get is, you know, I would call it softer regulation from the regional council around um, environmental discharges. Uh, but, the, you know, these are hard standards that we have to meet. And if we don't meet them, then you know you and us, us are um, then in the gun around um, uh, you know, you know, higher levels of expectations. So, so we're setting it. We're taking that really seriously, and we are um, going to be ready on the one on one July to meet all the disclosures for you, for you and all the other councils. Um, one of the things I think that you know that we still don't understand well enough is the um, concept of Timana Otawai, which is embedded in the. Um, in the legislation for Tomata ROI. And so, you know, we, we're trying to work our way through that and make sure we can hit the ground running. So I think you want to be, the first thing I wanted to be, John, you want you'd be assured that, um, you know, we're on top of that introduction of that regulation. Uh, and, you know, we'll look we'll look to come to one of these meetings closer to the end of June, just to give you some more um, assurance around that. The, the second thing uh, that probably worth noting is, you know, this, this these changes in central government create uncertainty, and that uncertainty is with um, our staff now. Uh, and so, you know, we, we have a we have a very active program around um, being as trans transparent and honest over the over the timeframes uh, by which this um, change may occur. Because the last thing we want to do is. Um, you know, it's, it's failed to deliver services to our owners and your customers. Um, we can't hold on to our staff um, during a period of quite um, high uncertainty. So, um, so we, you know, I think that's an important thing um, just to know about um, as we go forward. Um, so, the weirdest thing for me, if you look ahead in the next couple of years, is um, we are, you know, we've got this uncertainty coming, but but expectations, you know, on Wellington Water. And you as owners in the water space, they're just going, but they're getting bigger and bigger. We talked about land development, you know, with the volume we're processing through Wellington Water is way up. We're going to have to resource that. Um, you know, you'll, we'll have a chat, I'm sure, sooner or later around, you know, just customer service and comms. Uh, and we had an example the other day where, um, you know, the, there were 26 uh, complaints on social media about the water being off, and nobody, nobody actually rang the contact centre. And so, so, you know, the way we heard about it was from a councillor ringing, uh, actually rang me up to tell the truth in the middle of the night. Um, and so, so what's happening? You know, our view on that is we're going to have to, we're going to have to address that. And we put the, thank, you know, thanks to you for giving us a nudge. Um, you know, we put in two resolution managers to tackle these more of these stronger issues. But I, I think we're in, we don't have to up our resourcing again in the social media space um, and, and, and try and you know, rethink of the way in which we interface with customers because it's just changing so quickly. And if we don't, if we don't change with it, um, I can see those problems just continuing to um, um, carry on. And, and you know, you know, the, the budgets we have are fixed, so we have to think about how do we address that resourcing inside um, yeah, inside our current resources and stop some of the things that are probably not so not quite so important, I guess. 
Um, and the you know our main our main plank of effort at the moment is uh, you know is on on long term plans, uh, and uh, you know that goes through you know our story around you know, looking after existing assets, supporting your growth agenda, making sure we can continue to water to deliver water now and into the future, looking after your water quality and decarbonising your operations by twenty fifty. So you know that story still carries on um, well, and when I uh, when I talk to uh, uh, people from overseas about mm. as, as regulation comes in, it's really important to have a strategy as well as regulation. You know, those two things work together, and I'm very happy we were up to in our strategy. Um, we've caused a little bit of, um, you know, a uh, uh, little bit of a problem we were around your LTP with, uh, with the auditors across our six owners, um, you know, uh, auditing your LTP to make sure that it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's truthful and it's backed by evidence. Um, in all cases, uh, the Office of the Order General has identified a three water business as a higher risk business. Um, and as a consequence of that, ask for a higher focus on, on your LTP, like with the other councils over the hill. Um, and that standard that they've put in place for condition assessment on the material that we've used to lay out your renewals going forward, and indeed your whole asset management plan is a higher standard than we can meet. And that's the same for all six. Um, so they will be um, you know, saying to you that in their opinion, the evidence isn't there to support the projections. Now we, we have to own that together because um, you know, we, we will, the history of, of condition assessment, owns, we own that together. But what we will be doing is providing you with a separate um, letter from uh, Alan McCullough, <laughs> the Water Industry Commission of Scotland, who uh, will write you a letter um, and say that what we've done is um, uh, a significant improvement over the last three years and you should have um, high confidence uh, in the way in which we've carried out that work uh, and um, uh, going going into the future. So um, so I think that all, uh, you yeah, know, that's another little hurdle that we've got to go through in, um, in the next period of time. Um, and then lastly, uh, your mayor did a very good job at the Water Committee meeting of uh, um, just explaining to us that, you know, on your annual report, uh, we have a higher expectation of, um, of on the DIA measures and um, unlike the other councils who are unable to pass the water losses test, um, Know, my understanding is that you know that you can, um, and so we work really hard. Or we will work really hard to have all of those DIA measures fully up and running properly by the end of the year. Um, we still have a we still have a problem around the first six months of the year, from uh, July first, twenty twenty, to December January twenty twenty one, around when we've used that information, not in the improved format. So. I think that'll be a challenge to all of New Zealand to say, well, you know, if you if you improved it all and we're in good shape, you know, why would you call it a material issue um, if the you know if the first six months um, you know weren't quite up to speed? So uh, we want to we want to put you in the best light we possibly can uh, on that um, um, going, um, going forward. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I just wanted to mention that you know we still we still have a we're still having difficulty uh, getting to um, high performance around. Uh, general uh, connection with council and, uh, and the way in which we communicate with you. Uh, and we said that, that largely sat with the recruitment of a resource to sit in um, the South Wairapa uh, District Council so that all of the multitudes of functions that Wellington Water offer to you uh, work alongside council really well. Um, and we've made, a, we've, made, we've made a selection of that person. I think we talked to you about three or four months ago. Uh, we've made an offer that person has accepted it, I think, Jeremy, have they? We'll think so, yeah, yeah, accepted it. So as soon as possible, uh, we're looking forward to that person um, sitting inside the South Wire River District Council office and being that connection between you and us. Um, and then you know, we're looking forward to, you, you're not having quite so many grumps about our, um, you know, our, um, our performance going forward. Um, and so that, that is, that's all I really wanted to say at the start. So you know, open, you know, just generally open questions from you. Just on that, Harry um, <coughs> would make a purchase for that person in the office. Yeah, yes, sir. I guess it's more important now that we have that since Amy's gone on the bill, obviously, you have to look at a replacement and that would be perfect. So, I mean, the two of them speak together regularly. I think that, um, I mean, one of the problems is um, there's many parts to, really parts to water. And that's what we discussed about three months ago. Was, you know, 
Uh, so you're having a network operations, the plant operations, the communications, water races, uh, water restriction. So there's many parts there. And so at any one time we have, um, so trying to make sure that we've got one person who can point everything in the right direction, A to us and to them, is the critical thing to unlock some of these blockages. So I actually have someone in the office we can talk to um, who speaks as well as the water, not as the parts of it. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, in this world of uh, teams and teams, you know, you, when you do have a face to face meeting, we realize there is still an element of uh, added value in that. And so, you know, having somebody who can talk to Harry and Ewan and the rest of the staff every day and make sure that everyone understands what we're doing you know, will be a big improvement, I think. Yeah. Councillors, thank you, cool. um, Thank you, Colin. With the you were talking about uh, water standards, and that in July you'll be um, with, when the new water regulators and you'll be engaging with them. What is the Wellington Water's expectation of any standards that may increase as a result of Bill Bayfield and the water regulator? And yeah. how do we? accommodate those with regards to our current plans for A, a drinking water, what we call a drinking water management system, which is just language for trying to start tie a process all the way through that from source to tap, and then looking at it in terms of are there any gaps in Wellington water uh, when you look at it from that perspective, and we will know by the end of March. The guy who we popped in here, uh, who recruited David DeBoer, comes out of the electrical industry, and he. Um, and we've got a few problems in the network and by 1 July, South of Arapa will have largely upgraded all of its treatment plants to meet the multi-barrier requirements. So there'll be the odd gap. Now, my understanding is Tomata ROI is not expecting those gaps to be closed on 1 July. What they're wanting to see is transparency from the water operator that those gaps are clear and to what degree do they need to be closed? We're going into that assuming that those gaps are largely things that we can continue to work on in the normal rhythm of your LTP going forward. Now, I can't guarantee that until the end of March because um, until the gaps are seen and we're checked, um, we, won't, we won't know that. Um, and, then, and then what we're planning to do is come to the Water Committee in June and if necessary, we can come to individual councils and, and talk you through that uh, management system and the gaps in your networks. Um, and then you know how we're going to represent your position when we first have to disclose results uh, after 1 July. Because once 1 July goes over, um, then we're bound by regulation to disclose performance information on your networks. Um, and you'll obviously want to have a bit of a see of that before it gets public. Yep. So probably more on wastewater, and it's not a criticism of Wellington Water, it's the almost inability for us to make decisions on capital investment without knowing what any standards may be coming at us. And have you got any clarity from the government with regards to that? No, there's no, there's no new standards for wastewater on 1 July. It's only drinking water. Yeah. But what will happen um, is that they will come quite quickly. Yeah. So, um, but I, I, you know, I think at the moment, our efforts on your behalf in terms of wastewater is to build up our operating um, operating manuals on those treatment plants because they've been pretty pretty non-existent in the past. So that you know, so that we can you know, we run those uh, wastewater treatment plants to uh, 
approved operational procedures. Yeah. And, and, and if that, we hadn't done that, by the time they put those standards in, that would have been a gigantic gap for you around a regulator. Those manuals have been completed a while ago, haven't they? They uh, they're, they're We've not discussed this over a year. Not 100%, no. Not 100%. There's, there's, there's a bit, but they've been, yeah. well, I think the answer to that, the way I would see it, and what I've seen on the ground, is we've done a big lift to get them running. Yeah. And they always need to be fine-tuned. Oh. And I think you know what we've found in the Martin Group, in the Martin Group case, is that you know, the, you know that's a very challenging plant to operate inside the consent conditions. Once you, you know, once you get down to seeing how it really operates, and you know that's going to be hard work for us for some time. Sorry, Colin, are you, are you talking about both wastewater manuals and drinking water manuals? Oh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, both. <laughs> you want both under, uh, under, under, under not prescribed as yet. Well, all, well, no, no, all of them are, in, are already at a good standard, but I guess what Jeremy's reflecting is it's never the work is never finished. You've got to keep you know, updating those. But we're largely following operating procedures now um, on, on all of those treatment plants, and that is a very necessary pre prerequisite for regulation. If you have a regulator come in and wants to look at your system and you can't show the procedures you're following, you're, you're, you're in trouble. So the consenting authority is not required to come and check? Well, that's a good question, because if you think about um, what is Greater Wellington Regional Council's role under its yep. regulatory role, you could easily have um, extended that to saying they could have asked for that, but they never have. But once the national standard is in for that and it's regulated, oof, you know, you will not be able to turn that out, you know, really well. And that's just, that's just professionalism, isn't it? It's repeatability, yeah, that's um, being able to subject it to regular audit. And proving that you know that you do those regular audits and you you know you you're very transparent around how that system's running. We we haven't come from a place where we did that regularly. Now I'm just concerned because before running well, water, obviously we had this problem in Martinborough and we did we had an audit done then mm -hmm. by an outside third party, which and they alerted us then to the fact that the manuals were complete. Yep, yeah. But if you you know if you look if I step away from your particular circumstance, and we inherited the horror of the wastewater treatment plant, this Joker inherited on his own. You know, the, the, you know, the, the, I would, you would say that that treatment plant probably had about fifteen percent of it was systemised. Yep. Um, and, and, and you know, we're now got that up to hundred, and um, you know, and we're at what, ninety-one. Um, and, you know, and, and that relates to the condition of the assets when I mean, they should be replaced, the other related to management plan, you know, not just reacting when things break, you know, we're trying to turn it onto a much higher platform. And that's what we're doing for you as well. And you know, that will be an expectation of all small councils in the future. And, um, you know, and I just think that's one of the huge benefits of your decision um, to get on the bus early is that you, know, you benefit from that professionalism. That you, you know, otherwise you would have been reasonably at risk, I would have thought. Yeah. <coughs> yeah thank you. Um, you mentioned that, and I, and I must have missed something, but that our drinking water system is nearly compliant and will be by July. What part of it's not compliant still? Is that Soldiers Memorial or? Yeah, so Memorial Park. Yeah. Um, the filtration um, system there has to be installed yet. So. Cool. But we're not using that at the moment. Yes, we are. No, we are. Yeah. We are. We still are. Okay. But you, even if you, um, it's not a black and white thing either. You know, from my point of view, when the regulator comes on board, you know, let's say we didn't, and I'm not saying we're not going to miss the VDG, but um, the way, at least say you didn't, then you made it by 14th of August. It won't matter anything because the regulators, what are they interested in? Is, is your system right and are you addressing the problems? And you've been addressing the problem for 18 months, so that you know, they would be just totally chuffed with that. Colin, does the regulator come and said um, at any point that, you know, 1 July obviously is the day when they've got some clear expectations for information to be disclosed, but have they come and said when the next dates are for things to actually be done by? So I'm thinking when they rolled out the yeah. Health Drinking Water Amendment Act, yeah. they were pretty clear about suppliers yeah. needing to hit yeah. compliance levels at certain times. Yeah. Has there been any discussion, um, any changes around that? Because so there's a lot of chat about that and they talk about transition and we'll take our time and get it all right, yeah? But I'm, I'm not, I'm, we're not operating to that model. Um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go hard and be ready 1 July. Okay. So that red regulator could come in the door on the 1st of July and we would turn over the information they could do their first order. They won't do that. That's the way we're approaching it because it's so important that we don't expose you to risk 
um, in the water reform agenda because the regulation is, is part of the formula of government's approach mm. to water reform. So we, we just we want to assure you in June that we can disclose all of that information. It may not be perfect, but it's going to be way better than a lot of others could do. So I'm just thinking then, okay, about the current regulatory regime where we've got approved water safety plans for yeah. all of our water supplies. Mm. Where are they at in terms of are they fully approved, partially approved? How are we at with our implementation plans well, and anything we're probably that? Right. We should come back and, and reply there. But yeah, I think that's the level of detail I think that we yeah. need to have the confidence. Because yeah. I hear what you're saying, but what I think this council is really looking for is not just a really wonderful narrative which you've provided, but actually some and really good well, context for where are we at with the current compliance so, regime and where we hit well, that. Well, I think we do it's the same as what we've offered every other council. We do a dummy run in June. Know, so that we um, you know we come over and, and does that give us enough time? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've got no worries about that. But okay. you know, because it's not just about um, our water safety plan; it's around the monitoring and oh, yeah. we provide. And can we disclose the performance of your plants? Yes. And um, and we've been it's interesting that we've been caught out um, a little bit on our big plants at Mower Point and Seaview in the last month around um, they were tiny little um, dis discharges. But we couldn't prove that we could monitor them, and so that's been a bit of a shock to us. That um, you know, that we, when we say we can monitor everything and give you the performance expectations, um, you know, we, we couldn't in that case. But of course, this this gap analysis we're doing will highlight that. Yeah, and so I think you know, a really good, honest um, reveal in June for you around your drinking water and what that means in terms of compliance with the regulations from one July is the best thing we could do, and that's and then and then you'll see the evidence. Just thinking about that in the context of what we may or may not have budgeted for in the annual plan and I, um, whether I, we've got I any immediate costs that might think, be coming towards I don't us. Think you will. I don't, the information that David DeGore has only you know, been in the, in the shop for two months. Mm -hmm. um, the indications are that you know we, we will be okay um, for the startup and we'll have to work out how to continuously improve that. But you know, if you hadn't done these upgrades of your treatment plants and we gave you a gap analysis in June, we would have said Martinborough. Um, Great and Featherson, you know, you, you, you are not providing safe water. So the regulator is going to come in and immediately hit you. So what are you going to do about that? Well, we don't have that problem anymore. It's it's pretty, alleviated you know, some of it. Yeah, and you, you look like you're taking control of your risks and, and managing them on behalf of the communities. And that's what they're looking for. That's what regulations are about. need to make sure your customers are not having a walk to go there. Um, <coughs> Jeremy. <laughs> Uh, we discussed this over the coffee this morning. I had a few people uh, ask why the uh, fourth floor of the greenhouse taking so long. Right. I suppose you could explain to the council the difficulty I want Rebecca and Ross and Garrett uh, and Phyllis to just explain that. So, so the, I mean, there's been a number of things that have delayed us. There was the COVID-19 uh, pushed things out. Um, then there was, um, once we were on the ground um, and doing the work, we, we found the scope wasn't right. The project as an example, the, um, the, the power um, system on the site wasn't big enough. We had to upgrade the transformer that um, provides slippage. Um, then, um, then we had the summer demand period where it wasn't safe to, um, I guess, take the elements of the plant out uh, in order to progress the project. So over that big summer period and during the holiday period, we had the project again. Um, it's now that uh, now we um, off again, we're sort of back on track to, to having that completed in the next month um, yeah, yeah, or so, so. Next month. So yeah. all going well and no more uh, yeah. water, hot, hot days and all that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, obviously there, there's other factors there, but yeah, we're expecting that to, to have it online in the next month or so. so yeah. are, we, are we clear about opening up to July about delivering safety to the whole front? Yes, I think so. Yeah, so it's, make yeah, sure it's, it's in the, um, the project section that uh, the Nguyen's report, so those, those timelines are there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that. The, the major, um, I guess, impact on us was around resourcing um, during COVID, um, and also um, during the you know summer summer demand period, um, we the, enabling the works from operation was really tricky. So um, it wasn't safe to to progress that project at any speed during that time. Yeah, 
<clears throat> I guess it doesn't end there, but as a council, we've got to prepare for the growth that's going on mm -hmm. in, in the, those two towns and Mark. What's next? What are, <clears throat> you know, where do we look for next? Yeah, look, that's, that's, just, you know, that's just a fantastic you know, segue into our strategy story, isn't it? You know, looking yeah. after existing growth, you know, making sure you can retain and supply drinking water in, the, in, in accordance with your environmental concerns into the future. And so, you know, we, we will be coming and wanting to have a chat to you about that um, very shortly as we divide on that, that um, priority up for you. Because you, everybody's got that problem, haven't they? Oh, absolutely. And so it's either created by growth or it's created by um, limits on, on the freshwater sources around how much you can take into the future for the, for the Maori of the water. So, um, you, know, we, 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 you know, it's just a really good thing to get on with, Chair. Cross you the question. Uh, just to, did I read correctly that the fourth board is due to come online fairly shortly? Yes. Yeah, that's what just the we're we're What's the time frame for that, Jeremy? Uh, is it on that in the report? I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> good. We just had quite a discussion on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right, apologies. Yeah, you'll get the you'll get it date, but okay. Um, Jeremy just outlined the problem. I, I heard all that. Oh, but there's a time frame for it being online. It's yeah. the next couple. Yeah, right. Next few weeks. Yep. Ross, for you. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. Mr. Chair. Um, um, Jeremy, I get, I get a lot of uh, commentary from people saying, oh, you know, it's all shit going down over the concrete. Um, you know, comment? I get this comment. He's listening, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get that fourth floor right, too. And I do get the switches. There's so much going down over the concrete. Um, and people are saying, are we getting our fair share of all time? So I'd be really interested, you know, um, it's something that people uh, comment on. I'd really like your view on that. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, there, there is a, it's a very busy time at the moment around the, the long term planning cycle um, because, you know, all councils at the moment are deciding on their funding for the next 10 years. And then we've got to we've got to come back to you and present um, against those um, five strategic priorities. You know what you're funded and what you can expect to get over the next three and ten years. And we've got to do that for all councils. And that is that really runs the organisation ragged, uh, to tell you the truth. Because um, if something goes wrong, Harry, in that um, it happens for all six councils at the same time, and we can't cope with that very well. We're, we're good at you have to deal with one council at a time and it goes wrong, but if it goes six times, it just runs the whole place ragged. And we're nearly through that at the moment. Uh, and uh, and then, then we've got to concentrate on delivery you know, of the first three years of that program. Um, and, you know, other than other than a worry about general capability across Wellington Water and our supply networks, um, you, know, you know, I just think we're going fine. Um, you know, we're, we're on track with our capital programs. Um, you know, over there, what you read in the, in the papers is... Um, you know, it makes it sound well, it's a bit like rust, isn't it? It's a hundred times worse than it really is. We're pretty happy with our performance overall, and generally, we've got pretty good relations with our council. So, at the moment, I think we're, we're providing, you know, running pretty well. I guess, from you know, from my perspective, there's um, there's eight treatment plants on the metropolitan side, and there's eight treatment plants on this side. Um, from from my team, anyway, there's I would say eighty percent of our focus <coughs> from management. From, the manager of trend plants is on this side of the hill. So there's quite a disproportionate level of effort um, due to the nature of the assets over here um, and, and our time over here. So it, it really is our resources. So, um, and, then, and that's the same with um, our response to incidences, incidents. We have a lot, as you've probably read, um, response to incidents with um, major pipe work over um, on the metropolitan side. On this side of the hill, we have a, a lot of response um, that draws in a lot of resource for. Um, treatment plant issues. So uh, you know, there was the issue the other day with the Waheni plant. Um, it, it just draws in a lot um, of people and, and focus. And well, I think we've, got, think we've just gone through four weeks with no major incident. Did you so, just belt Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'll belt them back later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have been talking. Jeremy, that's really good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it would be good, you know, just because if you've got a plant, but perhaps if you're throwing it. Uh, take a period of sitting here, but it's actually what, what people tend to think about and think, you know, because you, they read about what's going on. Right? 
So the locals here back, well, actually, it must, must be, there must be spending where you're spending all your time. And so we're not getting a fair deal over that side. So, um, you know, having a way of demonstrating yeah. that proportion of the effort um, relative to the, um, the other councils would be really helpful. And that's yeah. the one with, you know, with, with numbers. Certainly, if you're saying 80%, that's yeah. a significant allegation. Yeah. Certainly, from my perspective, there is a disproportionate level of my team's efforts on this side of the hill, um, responding to incidents and dealing with just, just the nature of the assets over there. You know? So, um, yeah, it's. Um, and when you say that asset, the nature of the assets, essentially, is because um, the documentation and the plan is according we took it over, the asset position, it was right. like so, yeah. it's the basic, the basic information. I mean, things like the Waiheni plant, you know, just our ability to, to meet demand um, and, you know, provide safe water, it sits on a knife edge, you know, and it does create um, a lot of, um, I guess, um, focus for the team to ensure that we are providing water. You know, that it's, um, I think the other thing on that, Harry, is, you know, there's a, you know, I think we will just, we will find out over time that there's a chronic um, culture of underreporting in New Zealand. And one of the orders out correctly because, um, you know, when you go into regulation, you can't have any of that culture underlying the way you operate your plants. And, um, you know, we're, we've still got a few problems inside our, in our, in our whole system in terms of that, but we're, we're chasing out the last remnants of that mm. to make sure that there is no culture of underreporting. Everything that happens is just, you know, straight on down. And, uh, and in some ways, a lot of, that, a lot of our um, stakeholders find that a bit of putting because. The number of um, incidents we have now reported are way bigger than in the past, and it suggests the plants are going, you know, worse when in actual fact they're probably going better. It's just that you didn't really hear all the stories in past. That, I mean, that is definitely the case in South Wairarapa. That um, you know, there, you know, there, there is no doubt that we um, we have driven a culture of, um, of bringing things to the surface so that we can get, I guess, the resources. No pun <laughs> What's that? No pun <laughs> In order to, um, I guess, um, you know, have the, that focus from council for the funding, so it is, you know, it just makes sense for us to, to do that. Can I, can I just talk back to the um, the Wahini plant? It looks like um, six weeks is what we get in here from another commitment, so be mid April to the fourth quarter. Fourth, 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 fourth. Just um, if, I, if we go back twelve months, we're all sitting around this table. You guys were had Tom been on board, you are, you asked us to prioritise what we wanted to do <coughs> first up was potable water. And I think given that where we're sitting now, where we could be at the first of July, you've delivered on that. I mean, right at yes. a cost. <laughs> it has a cost, but the, our ratepayers wanted safe yep. drinking water. Yep. And we're no. not getting as much pushback on the amount of water, it's more the, the safety aspect of it. Yeah, and I think you, so you also want to congratulate yourself because when we joined the South Wairapa District Council, there was no investment aimed to bring about safe water, it was going to be carry on, you know, nursing them through. So, you know, I just think that combination has been a, a terrific result for us all. It's all right, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, just regarding your um, uh, performance indicators uh, on 2.1 uh, and of the increasing volumes of work. Um, I take on board what you're saying about um, increased work, but your current urgent water call out, call out measure is 60 minutes response time. That's what you mean, our, our target? Are your target? You said the proposal was to run to that, yeah. Yeah, and we're currently running at 11, 17 minutes. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is it, is it you, this is the one you mentioned the other day. Yeah. Um, how achievable is uh, that measure or any new measure you're proposing given the massive disparity between uh, what your measure was and what your current performance is? That's a great question. Um, the, the, you, the problem we've got is we've got a, we haven't quite got on top of the network performance and the number of faults and incidents we occur. So we don't really know what is normal around the number of incidents we have. And we're getting better at that. So the last six months, I think we've learned a lot. And we probably need another six months to go. And what we've done is we've said we want to we want to re, um, 
re-forecast your budgets you and through to June 2021 to make sure that we've got enough to manage the general faults and incidents we're experiencing to date. If, if, if that all works and we all agree on that funding, then it's appropriate for us to have a target. And, and we may not hit that target, but we're giving that target in, in good faith around how you should measure our performance. And so that means when you read it at the moment, there's work for us to do. And, and that's the way we want to we want to bring it down to six minutes. So um, if we can't, um, well, you know, we would have to talk to you about that. But I think having a good target that we feel comfortable that comes out of that re, re uh, forecast of the OPEX budget is the way to do it. Can I touch on that, please? Because Alex has sort of picked up something I was interested in inquiring about as well. When I was looking at those response times and thinking about some other statements you put in the report, um, one of the concerns that, that, that I have, and I'm interested in your views on this, is do we have enough feet on the street to do the work? Is that an issue with our response time? That's one thing. But is that also an issue? And I think there's a statement in there where you said, there's an issue around availability of operational staff to provide input to upgrades or be trained in use while they're responding. And then immediately seems alarm bells to me. If we're looking at revealing response time and we're looking at doing a whole lot of other things, what's our workforce capability actually? Yeah, Have we scaled that up here? That's another great question. I don't think it changes my answer around target based on the agreeable objects we have. I think that's still the right way to manage the business mm -hmm. with some tension in it. Yeah. Um, but you know, you're, you're touching on a really big problem um, for for New Zealand, really, um, and that is that there is insufficient um, people to do these jobs. They're not paid very well, um, and we, we don't have enough um, feeding coming through. And um, Alex will recall that we put a proposal through in the first um, fiscal stimulus package to advance the training module for the six owners. And, and the answer to that was it didn't meet the criteria, which is the most pathetic answer I've ever heard in my life, um, But, you know, I still feel that that um, is something that the councils could champion um, with the government because if we, if we don't, because when we don't have enough people, we have to go to subcontractors. Um, those subcontractors cost you more money and then we end up in a, in a, in a vicious circle. But it's so, still a capability issue because it's still the same people doing yes. work and we're not bringing new people in. Well, except that we would love them to be. You know, in the tent, in the tent. doing it every day, and so you know, I still think you know, we we could easily put a you know, fifty odd um, people into our business um, now to train them up and get them ready for the for the future. But the business doesn't, the business model doesn't allow that. It's a bit, it's a bit silly. New Zealand doesn't get that right, do we? We don't really um, set a price for the work we do, which inherently trains and allows young people to succeed in those roles. So. I think that's a conversation that we need to keep having with you and a conversation you need to take somewhere else. I, I think well. we should actually uh, continue that conversation with you, Cole, and Taratahi, mm -hmm. uh, and the Emma, uh, uh, Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. MPI, mm -hmm. on providing those courses. Yeah. And if it just helps, you know, the other day I sent an email to the government, um, because I, I like doing that every now and then, and said to them, you know, uh, <coughs> engineering graduates who graduate in 2021 get jobs in June 2021, and that's two months away. And we could probably put 100, um, 100 engineering graduates into the water business throughout the country. Why wouldn't you just be sponsoring, you only have to sponsor them for two years <coughs> for, um, before something else might happen. But why don't you just fund that? It's only a miserable three or four million dollars for two years of um, underwriting graduates. And those graduates seem to be fundamentally trained in the water sector and would be replacing the engineers who are going out the door who are too old. And we, but we don't have that feeding system. Yep. Very sad. Cross succession planning is mm -hmm. And it's an aging of course, too. So, you know, All right. Well, <laughs> a lot to hold here. There's a lot. Um, not easy, is it? I've got one other oh, question. Very brief. I should write it. Let's see if I'm really brief. Um, it's just a, a, a conversation around um, bringing on the caustic cider um, treatment for the Greytown plants, um, bringing the container across for that. Is there any consideration to using caustic as a long term yes. permanent solution and getting rid of the cider ash? That, that looks like it would probably be the favourite. Brilliant, because that will take away a lot of the problems for 
people with response times and call outs. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not as simple as all that, but I mean, no, yeah, no, the, 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 yeah, yeah. The, um, it looks like it will be the um, for both plants, right? And, 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 Cool. Colin, just given that uh, you explained that the time and effort spending over here in the wire for a friendship board, you can see that uh, once we get that up and running, well, the staff will be able to come back and, uh, and do other things. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think so. I think the prioritisation, we agreed with you at the, at the global level, was exactly right. And, um, and it's, it's hard to believe, isn't it, that we're nearly, we're nearly getting to the point where we can slap each other on the back and say, well, you know, what's the next big priority? You know? it's good. Yeah. Moving into a more planned space, I suppose, is the latest thing I see from my operation. Yeah. So, are they able to jump to a different type in one of the other three orders? Well, I think that's the thing that we want to, you know, we want to come back to you. What I would suggest on that is that we come back to you when you read your estimate of your LTP is being consulted on, and we come back and we close out the LTP with you, um, you, you and, uh, and, and major and focus on what you, as you look at the next three, 10 years, and what are the things that you really want us to, to do well on, that's the right conversation we had about that. And, and we just, all we've got to do uh, on top of that um, chair is to put um, regulation over, over that to make sure that we're not, um, we're not got gaps as we've already talked about. We'll be able to do that. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got a couple more. One, uh, the Lake Ferry trip line work. Has there been any identification of culpability, or are we just going to ignore that with regards to um, who, what happened, and whether there's an insurance claim? So it's currently sitting with the council. Yeah, we need to pick that up with the insurers. Oh. We're chasing it down. Yeah, well, I think you're chasing it down. Certainly hasn't been just left at drift off. Yes, as long as we are addressing that. Uh, the other one is, and it's a bit more of a high level one, is I'm pretty sure at some stage we engaged you to ensure that we had an asset management plan for our water infrastructure. Yep. And we haven't had that done. And you are saying that an asset management strategy is the most important part, which then feeds into budgeting, which then comes into your plan. Is that? Uh, well, you, um, to be really clear, you'll have your asset management plan shortly. Shortly, yeah. But um, the point I'll be making to the auditor, the Court of New Zealand, and the Office of the Auditor General is an asset management plan includes the strategic asset management plan that we've used to guide your investment and your long term plan. And then you've got the activity management plan or service plan underneath, which is all the detail that's around you know, how do you justify the sort of renewals. And that'll all be done. Um, for you and delivered to you in the normal course, but the OAG the other day agreed that it's not a prerequisite to the audit of your LTP, which is very sensible. Why would you? You want it before we start the financial year. Cool. And, and you, shouldn't, like you shouldn't be expecting it. Cool. I thought that was a, a requirement to audit. Ah, uh, well, we'll clear that up. Okay. You know, we would spend all this effort on your strategic estimation plan, and you want the, the nuts and bolts finished and you want your LTP. We don't understand it. You want to do it by the start of the year, but not now. What was the response from them? Agreed. Yeah. Totally agreed. But they, 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 you know, I'd have to say, in my opinion, they had no conception of a strategic asset management plan, which is the whole basis of the advisor on the LTP. But, you know, I don't, I'm sorry to say, you know, my personal opinion is, is that you know, like auditors know how to audit, but they don't know how to run a three water business. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. We do. We do. We do. We do. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing better than most. So, um, so back to that um, last comment you made about uh, coming back to have a conversation about what's important to us in the next um, three years, Colin. Yeah. Um, one of the debates we've been having internally is um, say the water report is And we have some very major capital yeah. um, to invest in terms of plant, our plants. So, <coughs> So you know, we have to wear, um, we're at a place where we've got to decide um, what kind of um, option we're going to invest in. But in that context, we're also very, very conscious that the uh, standard, the co-execution of the standards, but things like greenhouse gas emissions, biogenic, uh, methane, climate change, all those types of things. If we looked, you know, just in general, your opinion, your professional opinion, 10 or 15 years' time, if you're looking out, and if you were a water reform regulator, 
Would you be thinking that in the wire wrap a casting area you should have all these little bespoke parts, or would you be thinking that it should be a different kind of configuration? Because that's something that's great about it. So it's not just for three years. You know, we could end up in a situation with an over a piece in a, in a um, plant, which actually in the long term uh, is not the kind of option that would best suit the delivery of uh, wastewater. Um, Across the city, so it's just as your your effort. Yeah, your it's, a, it's a great question, Gary. So, if I start by going back through the five priorities, you know, we've talked to you in our story, you know, looking after existing access, growth, water security, water quality, and decarbonisation. We decarbonisation is not funded over the next 10 years by any of our owners, no, no, no owner is really addressing decarbonisation. Climate Change Commission is proposing a 20% reduction of carbon across um, your operations by the end of 10 years. So you, you know, you, you know, you're getting nowhere near it. One of the biggest sources of uh, greenhouse gases is uh, the wastewater system, both in methane and nitrous, nitrous oxide, I'm going to say it. And so you, 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 you have to be congratulated um, as a council in terms of, the, of working these issues through from the standards you're asking for. You know, you're, you're fronting up to the real issues of the future by saying, this is the standard we have to, to do. But there's no doubt in my mind um, that building individual plants on individual communities is not the way of the future. Uh, as when I've talked to overseas jurisdictions who have um, created bigger water entities, rationalization assets is a massive issue um, for councils. And, and Harry, in my opinion, rationalizing the assets in, in, the, in the wire wrapper would be um, would be just a no brainer. Thank you. <coughs> right over. We do need to move on. Um, oh, very good. Um, so you're, you're not you're not going to get a few things on the back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as I can. Um, <coughs> yeah, this is probably not a lot of you. I'm just conscious of a couple of parts in the um, officer's report, probably just worth talking, um, that we haven't touched on as part of that discussion. Um, around the um, so 2.3, the, the, on page 6, um, great on Marlborough of wastewater treatment and capacities. Um, you be aware that we do have some constraints in, in the networks on those, and we are upgrading the, uh, the sewer main as it passes down Tavoy Road, um, and we've got further plan for um, a further uh, upgrade of another section as part of Rail TV. Um, but it's just a bit of a heads up that um, uh, runs more for a look at the, the plant capacities. Um, and making sure we have enough there for projected growth. Um, we do have allowance in the LTP for work, I think it's years five. Um, so it's part of the study is looking at the, the timing of that growth. And so we'll be able to um, understand what we need to do once the talk of questions a bit more investigation into those plans. Um, and we'll come back to you on, on those. Um, 2.5 around the manganese Reduction plant that's um, up and running, and, and the job has been touched on already. And I think the rest will kind of cover off within the report, unless there are any other water related questions. Now, once you had a water related question, kind of water related, uh, it's more to do with Donald's Creek. Would you like that to come in a different part or as, as part of this report? Donald, um, that up, we've got a plan for that, but we just need to find the last one. Yeah. Cool. Okay, guys, for the second time, thank you very much. <laughs> ah, yeah, no, thanks for having us there. I think we've um, I think we've agreed, in addition to uh, the normal report we give you, that we will, we will come back and do two formal visits before June, at the end of June. One to um, one that will be a normal one, which is around close to the LPP area. Um, as, as you once you've done your consultation and what are we going to do? And then I think the second one is that we will arrange, Jeremy will arrange to say to the board to come over and we will run a, um, what I would call a, um, a practice disclosure session around um, in June for you about how you would look six months later when you had to do your first half year report to meet the water replay. So we'd be doing practice for you, right? Yep. So when you said it was late, I understand why you think that because one July, but you won't, don't have to worry about it because the first one will be like a six month report. And so, so you, you know, we'll make sure that you know what's going to happen and we've got six months to make a reporting, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And we'll come and make sure that happens as well. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, I just, just 
quickly touch base <laughs> we have a meeting or a workshop that's um, due to be held with regards to if there's some wastewater treatment plant and that was going to be coming back to, to the council um, prior to any in community information days and I was just wondering what this is yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so that's going to be the, that's going to be that workshop or that. Okay. That's the workshop. So our team is all coming okay. over to, to talk to you about that. Sorry. Sorry. Is that, is that right? My, yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. Right? yeah. I knew we were having a meeting about. You get another. Today. You, There's some you get another. Bunch of, we, haven't, we haven't done very good on our uh, footprint coming over the hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh. Electric cars. <laughs> it just, just to differ a point of clarification, sure. If I just could ask, is when you say deep decarbonisation of three waters, what are your top priorities to achieve that for us? Um, well, at the moment, uh, you know, we've got our own business, which is modest. So that's just like your council affairs. Mm -hmm. um, we've got our um, our capital business, um, which is quite a big emitter. And our priorities are to move to trenchless technologies, um, which we're, we're starting off on and we're doing pretty well. I think we've gone from last time we looked, we've gone from 40% trenchless to 60 in the last couple of years, which is really good. Um, and then in the OPEX space, we've got, we've got big problems around um, wastewater uh, plant emissions, uh, okay. treatment, treatment chemicals um, like your greenstone sand we saw this morning. Um, I don't know how often we have to refresh that, but. You know, it's obviously a lot of, it takes a lot of production to make that and bring it over. Um, and, uh, and we all suffer from uh, non-renewable energy issues. We all get hit by 80% on that. And what was the fourth Oh, you don't have it, which is, um, uh, we use gas to dry um, some of the sludge in, in right. Ireland. So you don't have that problem. So there's, there's some, it's a, it's a reasonably large emissions uh, platform for three waters and we you know we should really be start cost so of, cost it's got a couple of footprint too so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so you, you've got a your discussions with us looking forward from a climate change perspective to make sure that we're starting to mitigate those or well I think that's Harry's point there um, yeah. Alex which is that when we come back in that LTP and you know, what sort of money because at the moment it's not fixing problems it's more studying yeah. what the right place to start is but your Featherston, um, your Featherston proposal is addressing emissions, yeah. for example, um, and then we have to show you what else we can do. And I guess the, you know, the, the, the plea from the government, isn't it, is that if we don't start now and chip away at it, you, you never catch up. So you know, we want councils to be trying to do that. As long as the conversation's going yeah, and moving well, forward. Yeah, well, I think that'll be right, Harry Winner. Absolutely. That's two problems. One is the biogenic methane, but the other is um, the method of aeration for the aeration itself, mm -hmm. the energy consumption to actually aerate, which is the perspective of the trend of the future. Um, this is incredibly energy, energy intensive. Um, so we've got you know, basically the data are very, very serious about decarbonisation and that account that really is about the footprint of the continent so, yeah, so that, that has to be a challenge not just for um, New Zealand in the sense of small town councils, it's actually a challenge for every farm. For every farm, to be found. It's quite congested to wrap the times for our treaty people. So, I've been talking you know, about the Garrick. We talked to um, who addressed yesterday that would be our climate change commission, saying, well, here's an innovation. If you want to make a difference, New Zealand's fire should make a big thing, it should be up and out. So, you need to be a bit of treatment. Um, deal with biomass in a, in a really um, sensitive way. So you get innovation, you can scale, you can take it to biomass <coughs> and it's a good thing council. So I think there's, there's a whole opportunity here. Um, thanks for having us as usual. Yep. So, just sorry, I just realised we had a quick chat around keep building capacity and we have to have um, Ian to um, talk through some of the work and some of that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna I was gonna rest so thank you. Sorry, I realized that um kind of um, maybe have part of the discussion, but um you know, sort of it's covered our um presentation you know um, making this on the screen, it's not actually in your um so apologies for that, but we'll um make this slide available. <laughs> We're about to be quiet.
assume we get shared videos with some site. Yeah, we'll have we to share the slides with stuff. Let's just know part of your uh, I just want to say, dragging up just a quick procedure item. I just want to clarify why you can it's around the table and it's not part of the committee, but she is on a waste minimization, yes. which means oh, back into this committee. So uh, that's why. That was the same. All right, I'm up. Hi. You're on. Thank you. And um, nice, nice to be back over here again. Have to be a wee one, so good to see everyone again. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I put, I put this together, you know, after having a bit of discussion with you. And uh, well, there's also been quite a bit of, bit of talk around all our client councils around um, our ability to deliver into the future. Um, we've, we've come from, we're coming out of a period where there's been very static funding across the region. For a long time, and you know, we've done a lot of work since when the world was founded on building our capability. But it, it has been sized for the you know the size of the, the current you know the current funding level. And but 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 having said that, the good thing about the model we set, the delivery model we set up with the long term partnerships we have with our suppliers is we, we are well placed to to meet the challenge. You know. With increased funding over the next LTP cycle, um, but it will be challenging. Um, and I, I guess it, 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 there's there's two there's two kind of streams to our approach um, to to address that challenge. Number one is obviously capacity and capability, but also we got to we got to be more productive. You know, we've got to do things smarter and more efficiently. Um, otherwise, you know, because we're not going to get there, we're just getting more bodies alone. We'll fail if that's the case. So I guess we've got about four initiatives that we're that we're focused on at the moment. Um, you'll be aware that we've been using the you know some of the government's stimulus money to to try the catchment approach, using using more trenches te technology and 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 I guess the real the real aim of that is kind of to to, to tease out a model that kind of delivers you know you know replaces more pipes with 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 less effort and. And so we're keen to keen to take the learnings from that from that trial and put it back into our business as usual program going forward. You know, and you, you know I, we're, we're well into that work now, and, and it's, it's it's looking looking pretty positive, I guess. Um, this the second thing we're doing, I guess. You know, with 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 the increased increased funding from the client councils over over the next wee while, you know, we're going to sequence that work. We're not going to. We're trying to avoid having a Mount Everest on the, on the, in the first year. So we're looking at ramping up over the first three years and, 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 and do with our, with our, with our supply family. Um, and I, I guess the third thing really, we, over, a, over a good period of time, we, we've, been, we've been aggressively trying to get our program, annual program each year out earlier and earlier. And that enables us to, you know, on the first July each, each year, we aim to, you know, have digger buckets in the ground, so to speak. So we're not, we're not, we're not we don't have a, a nine-month construction program. We have a twelve-month construction program. It, it sounds kind of obvious, but it is a challenge for a lot of councils around the country. You know, they they, they don't always start start building things at start of year. So this this year, we, we you know we're probably more ahead than we have been ever. We, we've we've just recently published our draft annual program, and and shared that with our suppliers and you know the, the team. Are working hard to actually make sure that we're, you know, we are hitting the ground running, so to speak, and um, and then and then I guess the fourth thing you will have probably seen in a bit as well is we 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 have commissioned a capability review collectively with our suppliers, and and that's really taking a three hundred and sixty approach, you know, and it's 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 kind of well the scope of that is really is having a really good hard look at the one three and ten year. Program, what um, grouping the activities in there, looking at our current capability, it, it, you know, retesting that independently, and see how the two match up, and then see how, how see where the gaps are, and you know, we, we'll have we'll have we'll have that that report back. I'm hoping by the end of the month, and 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 then that will enable us to to have a really a really good look at. What, what levers we need to pull and how we can work collectively with our with our suppliers to actually, you know, bridge bridge any gaps we may have and, and also give us good visibility on where the gaps are, what areas are in, and that type of thing. 
So, you know, we obviously keen to come back. We do. We, we have part of the scope is to have a really good look at, the, at this side of the hill as well, because you do, you do have some differences over here. Um, and so, like, I'm really keen to, to share what we what comes out of that and then what our plan is going forward once, once we get there, if that makes sense. Um, I have, we, have, we have had a wee bit of a look at, you know, you know, you'll see, you'll see the various options for your for your funding, um, and if, if we look at it, if, we, if you look at the, at the at the difference, it, it's it's not it's not huge between from our perspective on a regional level, that between the high and low level, it's, 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 it's annually it's it averages out about one between one million and one point six a year. So you know, like from from your point of view, it's probably more. I'm picking. It's probably less of a. Ca Capability and capacity issue. It's more. It's more of getting us, getting us. You know, which we've been on a progression anyway for the last eight months. Getting more organised. You know, to things like Colin mentioned earlier, getting that program lead on the ground here. So we're more organised. We're, we're the constraints that we have over here because it's such a. You know, it's a, it's a relatively small network, and and we've got relatively. You know, we we're not like blessed with lots and lots of operational people that we can call on when we're doing things and things like that. So it's, it's about kind of some of those constraints in the system, probably as much as capability and getting organised. That makes sense. But uh, you know, I won't, I won't bang on too long. I'm keen to take a few questions or feedback. Um, does that make sense? Yep. Just one. Things buzzing on my ear. <coughs> Technology and I don't agree at all. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, any questions for Ian? Uh, probably the big thing I've got to say, you know, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be, we're doing all this work and we'll be doing ongoing, we'll need ongoing work. The risk will still remain there, but we're trying to keep it as, you know, keep it as moderate as we can, you know, if that makes sense. But it is, a, it is a challenging time for the sector. Yes, it's pretty hard to preempt what the Water Commission is going to come out with and all that, all the other, you know, we can do, get all our ducks in a row and then come out with something and the ducks will all run away somewhere else. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, I don't know, it's, I, 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 I think the key message I'm trying to give you today is that, you know, we're not sitting back and waiting to see what's going to happen. Exactly. We're getting ready, you know. Yeah. It's front footing. But we don't have all the answers yet either. Yeah. Yeah. Colin, you have a comment? Might I ask a question? I think so. <laughs> 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 Probably a question. I, I think, you know, um, yeah, we, we, we definitely got this um, capability of June table. Um, but I do think it would be useful, maybe in that LTT discussion, when we see the volume of work, just for the, for the council to be very clear about your expectations of of that capability growth here, you know, uh, you know, because we dance around it, but you know, do you mean around local contractors and things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it would be good to have a very hard, not a hard one, um, just a really clear discussion about expectations of locally done. Yeah, well, so I, that, you know, I, I think I, that, I guess that's what the signal of what I'm saying. I came to come back and have a really good discussion once we have some good information on where, what the, you know, imagine the activities to the. The capability, if that makes sense, yeah. then we can see the front of us. Yeah, so the yeah. asking council you know, to be very clear about their own expectations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess the only goes back to a old teacher of mine used to say to me, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. So, you know, what we, you guys are doing is front footing something we've really got to take notice of. Thanks for that. Yeah. You. Right. Um, We'll just have a quick break on that. A few people halfway to the front cheek together, including me. Thanks for your money, guys. See ya. Good. I'm the final one. We didn't even get a Continuing and the, the pro overall program uh, for the year is on track. Um, we've finished the uh, 
see on the local roads. We've done the uh, Puna uh, seal extension that's all completed as well. And, and the rest of the work is, is on track. Um, there's been quite a bit of work out of the coast at Dow 80 and, and Bucks Road around replacing culverts and up to increasing the size of those to help with some of the storm operations out there uh, and also the bridge abutments uh, as well. Uh, we did have a bit touch on it later and um, stuff around the road um, asset management plans or activity management plan is there. Um, we have had some feedback both uh, from the auditors and from NCT around that we're making a couple of tweaks but um, it, it, Councillors still want to have a bit of a workshop around the asset management plan and we can still set that up with some interesting value. It did look like quite a large document, but there's an element of repetition in it, so don't let the size of it be off reading. Yes. Um, is there any questions around going? Well, you know, it's something you it's, it's neither water nor roading, but the clearance of, of creeks and streams, gravel, ravine. Where does that fall? Uh, so, uh, with us in Greater Wellington, and I know there are a couple of pinch points in the network as well, and we've had a couple of discussions with uh, Greater Wellington around how we can progress that. Yeah. Um, and we'll be coming up with a bit more of a plan around those pinch points. This is an, an ongoing problem is the build up of rocks under bridges, mm -hmm. culverts, and Donald's Creek. So that giving rise to flooding and devastation, um, and, and I'm sure other areas are the same. So, um, so we'll, <coughs> you said there's an ongoing discussion with Brendan uh, White. Yep, yep, and then we'll be um, looking at what we do and how we take that that gravel out. Thank you. Um, on on that, because I've had a, I've had a chat about this as well. But in, um, I don't know whether anyone can remember, but in in 2000s, there was a Donald's Creek flooding prevention scheme that was rated by Greater Wellington Regional Council. And I've checked out and I've seen evidence of that in older documents. Does anyone know what happened to that scheme? Because if they were rating and they had money for it, they should have continued, or was there a resolution to remove it? Well, I think 2000, it was um, Ricky Long was actually in Greater Wellington. Uh, and um, in his newspaper, he discussed the I mean, Donald Trump flooding prevention. It was, on, it, was yeah. on, it was on the. Yeah. We used to have different schemes, a lot of valley catchment scheme, and, and I'm, I'm certain Gary's right that yeah. that's where that. That's where it ended up. Ended up there. Yeah. And there was a lot of valley group. Yeah, but it may have been dissolved. This is 20 years ago. No, no, no. no. We discussed it at the last two of our and um, the Greater Wellington has a lot of different target sites, and um, I don't know them all, <laughs> um, but I can we can definitely have a look and see if that's actually still. Yeah, Rob, well, yeah, interesting to see if there's another hundred grand still sitting there in the fund yeah. that they've absorbed into other areas. Mate, because Garrett sits on there. Gary, did you? Oh yeah, I'm just going through it now. Yeah, investigate that because there's other two. There's money sitting in there for it. Yeah. And it's an issue. It's a big yeah, issue. Yeah. Okay, no, I, nearly, I, I, I nearly drowned at Corolla. It's a pretty good one for those guys. Oh, it's brand new. Don't be silly. See that we'll cut that bit, won't you? Oh, yeah, last right. week, the last meeting was July last week. Yeah. What's the yeah, last? Oh, very meeting, and there should be another one coming up. So, Gary, can I just clarify what goes on? So, I've talked to Greater Wellington Regional Council. I think it's all explained to John Pierce on the Dolphins Creek issue. Yeah. So, just put a bit circle back. So, um, as a general principle, if there's um, gravel that's a big thing, one of our assets, um, we've had to apply for consent, but it's our responsibility to actually. Um, so an example of this, the bridge just out here, um, we've put in coins and various things to protect the abutments of that bridge and uh, take away all clean, um, actually get scour up the logs and various things. State Highway 53, that's um, NZTA, um, so they, about two years ago, they lowered the gravel bridge to get more clearance for the um, plans. Donald's Creek, um, because it's our asset, normally 
there should be our responsibility to clean the ground out. Greater Wellington and HKL offered us to use the consent, so we don't actually need to apply for consent to do that. Um, what I haven't clarified is that when I talked to Wayne, he said, yes, there is a scheme, but it's upstream of Donald's Creek. So that's so um, they said, so that's the an issue to clean out Donald's Creek and the bridge, yeah, which is like, as far as I can see, it looks like our responsibility to do that. Um, but then you get that gravel migration, you've got the problem again in two years. So um, what Wayne was saying is that uh, the scheme upstream should accept the responsibility to make sure we don't get the gravel migration. So that's what we're talking about, we're going to talk about to make sure. They appear, but um, then we've got a program power, which is actually going funding. I don't think there is a, um, a rating scheme that covers that. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what he's saying. Who takes over the, through the private plan? Because that obviously means draining at the bottom end of it, too. It goes in clear as much as the like under the bridge, but it's got to flow down that rent. Is the landowner's responsible for there, isn't it? In the river, no, I wouldn't think so. I could maybe, maybe anything that's done in a river in a river would require a consent from the council unless it's in the council. Yeah. The council's they're probably, yeah, they're probably getting less flow than normal because yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So they probably want it probably yeah. longer. Yeah. 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 So they're getting nice lots of water over their hand to keep them to keep it yeah. moist. But you know that's the point because I was actually having a discussion with my own this down this map. Normally with uh, gravel clearance, is there someone that would do that for the gravel? Uh, it being a, a normally you pay a royalty for gravel removal from rounds, um, but could be you know, cleaned up as a by a contract. I'm sure there's 50 people on the gravel. We'd be probably doing something. We'll take it out. So it might be a side. As I, as I, I think I've mentioned to Harry as well, but if we could do that, because there is, there is actually with the restoration that's occurring upstream, this is affecting efforts to maintain Donald's Creek. So the sooner we do it, the better. Yeah. I've just got one question around that. How, how does that work if we use GDUP's consent? Um, I, 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 well, technically, um, it means that if, if we breach, it's, we do something wrong, GW will run. That's, so, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's actually, you know, we have to make, they want to make sure that we exercise the so it's a good, it's a lot of generous one. Yeah. It's a, it's a, they can give they can give a hell of a risk. Like we must do that. We wanted to never kill this one by something. Like push. We could be really the available ones for control. Where would we vote that? No, of course we don't know. No, no. If you're a part of me, there won't be any answer. There's no way to not say it. Sam, you have a. Yeah, if I could, please. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a very kind of problem. For you, Ewan, um, the only drains in Oxford Street, they come under, um, for example, because there's more than that, there's New York Street and things like that as well. Is there um, a program to clear the rubbish that sits in those drains? Because um, that causes flooding within the town when they're blocked and the water comes over the road and it floods all that, for example, the medical area and, and <coughs> things like that down at Oxford Street. That, <coughs> That was just one, and I know that um, the townspeople get all up in arms when, when that happens. So, is there a program to do that? There is, and it's there are inspectors and everything. But if, if you know of an issue, then yeah, please. So that's what's 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 okay, cool. And part of what's contributing to that is there is a uh, catchment uh, uh, by the golf course. And there is a culvert which draws water through underneath the road and into a different swale that then goes down um, New York Street here. Yeah. And that is blocked or too small for the catchment, and it's flooding into the Oxford Street swale, which is doubling the amount of water going down there. So there is a relatively easy way to address that, um, but it just does needs consultation with Mr. Worley, who is the developer of Marfinder Estate. Um,
um, I mean, very events in the Maui, mm. the we uh, and the Maui ratepayers who uh, paid for a bottle bank and it's worth marvelously. Some tow rag took the back door, bought one of the bottle banks, and it was quite an effort, and put the remains of a dead sheep in there oh. and then shut it again. Oh. Yeah. Now, you know, we're doing our the best, very best we can to supply our service with the support of the Maui rate powers and residents. Mm-hmm. We get people go along with that, they just pull it in. And it's not fair what our know, contractors and our staff. Yeah, it's horrible. It's I mean, you know, maybe some contractors picking them up and taking them yeah. off. There was guts and all. Oh, oh that's just disgusting. That's yeah. terrible. So, you know, this is what we'll face, but... Yeah, like it been there a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But uh, uh, as an aside, though, and a big mm. aspect as well, that could I congratulate Bryce and the amenities team for the work they're doing? Mm. It's mm. very yeah. high class, reactive, and everything is very popular. Yeah. 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 And, and can I can I just also um, uh, uh, yeah reiterate exactly that? But um, the Lichka project um, for the Waihinga. Yeah. Cemetery that that's um, that's been on uh, has been raised for for a few years now um, a, a very special project for Mate Higginson and uh, the amount of work that he he had put in there um, to have be able to work alongside council um, has been has been but the results speak for themselves basically so it's just absolutely. Fantastic to see. That's the long thing. There are, um, in addition to the, um, <coughs> I guess, the core work you would see, um, the amenities team has been picking up a lot of um, extra work in the last, uh, last few months, including the, the BGF projects. And on page 29 of the uh, report, there's a dashboard there which outlines some of the um, additional projects that are being completed, including the, um, the uh, Upgrades to Anzac Hall in terms of the toilets and the roof that's all completed and, and signed off. Um, some TGF funding that we um, got last year. Um, and work is drawing to an end around the War Memorial and um, in Kettleston as well. Um, in time for uh, Anzac Day. Um, and also the work from the community centre is carried on as it says there, the, the internal parts done, car parts been resealed. I'm not sure if any have been there, but it's, it's made quite a big difference. Um, and we are just finishing some external painting and we should be uh, finishing that project towards the end of March, which are all on track and all to budget. Cool. Within two weeks. So it's, yeah, it's all, um, <laughs> this is work over and above. Um, and then of course we have the, the Hauri Kimurai, um, work where we're facilitating the process between um, the infrastructure reference group and the PGF and, and the Mai itself. So that's uh, still a work in progress around uh, that one. Neil yeah, Lynn, yeah. um, just around that, we had to sort of seek a, we gave approval for that to happen. Um, is there any risk, do you think, to us around there being delayed due to contractor res- availability? Uh, so that's uh, been the big issue and some sort of the delay around the Mai um, is that we actually had. Uh, Harry and I had a conversation yesterday with the guys at MB, um, and we've come to an agreement around how we can uh, provide flexibility within the contract. So basically, we've, we've addressed that risk right. um, before we actually sign the contract. It's excellent. Okay. And it has been the big delay is just availability of contractors. We've heard around the water, but it's common across the district, across every trade. It's just no. I, I get people. Yeah. Uh, similar, uh, like a similar story around the Terenico Bridge. Um, we are in discussions with PGF and the Trails Trust around timing and contracts for all those sort of things. Um, there has been a slight delay to the Kiwi Rail project, which they want to complete before we can do too much more. So I have that, that's an external impact, which again, we've been able to agree or approach with MB around that to avoid any risk to come. We are, uh, there's lots in there. Um, <laughs> uh, where we, um, as part of the annual plan, agreed to uh, fund a million dollars to the G 
gym at Brunelie College. And, and a couple of weeks ago, we did get uh, initial um, concept designs from the Ministry of Education around that, and we have a meeting with them next week and we discuss things like public access and management agreements and all those sort of things, which will be um, agreed before the funding is released as per the council resolution. <laughs> What is the expected start date on that? I, I, I don't know. Again, it's probably been slightly too late. Um, I don't know. It's not my head. Uh, yeah, there's lots there. <laughs> Some of which we want to cover as part of the role. I mean, you've done a great job with commentary. You saw it look at speaks quite clearly where you are now and getting on with it. And um, I guess that all the doctors, doctors, the most weird part of me. <laughs> yeah. Could, could I add, add something? And I had a re I sent an email to Harry about this, but this is the correct committee to discuss this. Is uh, Five Rivers Medical Centre will be opening in November, and there still remains the issue of disabled and footpath access to the centre. And uh, that you know, it would be good of us to have that in place prior to the centre opening, uh, if we are expecting, because then the medical centre will be closing, and uh, we need to know that we have disabled and wheelchair access along outside Kuranui and across the road to the centre. So the funding for that to be part of that foot after renewal, or is that separate? It's separate. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I know there's been a slight meeting between Tim and uh, people from the medical centre. I'm not yeah. sure what the outcome of that was, but I can come back to them. On that. Cool. Yeah. It just might be that this is something particular that we put into our project timeline. Yeah, right. There's something we really need to. Well, it is. It will be. There's a, there's a time critical component to it. Um, yes, yeah, so there is. This piece there on the centre isn't that swimming pools um, work as well. Um, it's not in there, but um, and then Pam may, may want to pass comment as well. Um, we're progressing. We sorry, I should back a step. You've been aware we got some funding from the national libraries um, yeah. to uh, recruit people in to do various aspects of work. That's progressed, and we've managed to um, uh, recruit those. So most of the people into those roles. Um, which is really cool. So it's, it's things that are going to help really uh, lift our libraries to, to the next level, as well as being great centres for, for learning and education and community engagement. It's things like um, STEM, so science, technology, engineering and maths coordinators. There's, there's community engagement uh, people. There's people to run education and reading programmes. Um, so we've, we're progressing those as well. Pam, I don't know if you have. Um, I'm catching up with Annie um, next week, but um, yeah, uh, I think it's fabulous for our libraries. Yeah. This is a, a nationwide thing that, that um, National Library are doing, but between ourselves and Carson, we've managed to secure quite a bit of funding to, to develop and grow those programs. So the progress has really been made on those two. Yeah, I think we've got five, five new people. Five yeah, and, and, the, the, and, and the caliber yeah. of, of candidates was, was fabulous. Really high level people in to do this work, so yeah, of course, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, so I take that. Right. Yeah. The last little bit I was just going to quickly cover off was Innovating Streets, which is oh, yeah. uh, page 13. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of an update. This is the, uh, the update as part of it, it's on the website as well. Um, around some of the work that we've been doing there. So, we uh, again uh, secured funding from NZTA to do this piece of work. And we engaged Bluff and Miskel to basically um, run the project in conjunction with us. Um, there's been quite a few community engagement sessions um, and we've got some really valuable feedback, some of which is uh, outlined on page 14 of the report. Um, part of that feedback was that the, the original site probably wasn't suitable for, uh, for various reasons. So we have listened to that feedback and have uh, looked to shift the site to the other side of the square. Um, so again, this is around having live trials in the community um, of, <laughs> uh, of concepts of ideas so we can get some people's feedback rather than expect people to understand what's on the page. So uh, the next one is uh, actually tomorrow. Yeah. 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 So, so, right. so it's still going on in my book. There's a 
there is an exchange of handshake and those same thing tomorrow. Yeah, so it's only, um, I think it's in the morning into early afternoon, or uh, it's later in the day. Uh, I believe. Yeah, so it's, it's not the full setup, it's not, it's just sort of concept designs and how to look or do this. So it's actually, again, it's part of the engagement process. It's not the answer, it is seeking people's feedback and commentary. It's, it's a, an iterative, evolving thing that would be great to get along to if, if you're available. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> is there any questions for you? I think it's quite a, it's a very good report and uh, it's a base with the detail and it is uh, very good. Well, the other thing is that there's still the survey going on, so if people want to, um, to oh, put yes. in the survey on innovative streets it needs to be completed by tomorrow and and what's the uptake been on that now um i don't know the numbers uh but we do have some infographics around the sort of response that we've had mm -hmm. it's, it's been a really interesting mix we've had uh, it's, it's mostly been very positive and, and um, that's, that's great uh there's been a lot of comments around i guess uh, use and access of the square itself so people are seeing this is a bit of a stepping stone to a broader conversation around how do we make that area a bit more easy part of the process we actually had um, a survey of uh, how people move around the area um, and a lot of people and this one comes surprised to turn to get to the end of, of kitchener street there at the end of the state highway and turn back it's very doesn't seem to be a lot of food traffic coming through here just because of the layout of various bits and pieces. So it's something that might be um, picked up as a broader conversation. Mm. Um, but we do have infographics around the sort of comments that people made. Um, it's, the words that always pop out are, are trees, seating, use, access, all that sort of stuff. So it's mm. common themes there, which again won't be a surprise, but it's really <coughs> good to get that community. It's fascinating to me seeing the number of people using the square for picnics and yes. sunbathing or lounging around. It's really, I've never seen that before. <clears throat> and I think a lot of that's the amenities, got the seating in there and the better seats and, and also the playground, all attracting it into being a bit more of a community area. Interesting you can say that my wife um, was in Ferris and waiting for someone for an hour or so yesterday. And she said the same about the, the square club. You know, there were a number of uh, people in there sitting around and so, you know, whether it's because of the COVID, there's more people getting out and about, but it's great that we've got these amenities that we can enjoy. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and is there anything you want to talk about the waste? Um, no, I think um, it's now the action of, yep. of putting that into practice now. And, Good. Um, I think we just wait to see how the feedback comes from that, from the licensing of the contractors yep. went from to, to later on. And, uh, and I think we just will hold this report back as, as we oh, get great. more updates on yep. that. Yep. That's a big part of this. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, before we um, move on, I did realise that um, we didn't cover off the blue staining in any detail. So oh, this yeah. is, uh, um, Apologies. Um, this is actually Appendix uh, 4, mm -hmm. uh, so it's from page 15 onwards. Um, as, as you'll be aware, we've, we've done the comments externally as, as well as yourselves around the issues that we've got in terms of managing the pH of the water supply that's going towards Greytown um, and Featherston, um, which has the impact of um, staining in people's vanities, sinks, baths, all, all those sort of things. Um, so there's also quite a detailed um, briefing there, which is uh, which is being made public as well, and we have brought forward, or sorry, the, the original intent was to uh, to change the, the pH dosing. Um, that's going to be something we're doing anyway, but we've actually brought forward a temporary um, solution for that to address that issue earlier, um, and we'll let you know a bit more detail on that once once we have it. So we we're bringing forward work to address that issue. I, I, I did have a question around that. Um, so that's the caustic cider dosing that they're, they're talking about. Um, there'll be some additional costs for council to incur potentially 
um, with that. Have you got any indicative thinking or questions around that? Um, I don't know, and if I, I don't hand, um, I'm not sure it's able to be absorbed within the program. So it's actually bringing forward some funding from later in the year to do that work on notice is able to be absorbed within the program. Okay. There's no consideration around additional structural requirements that might need to take place in the plant to cope with that change in treatment? No, no so there's, there's already a, a place for it. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, we used to have that trouble on the farm, and all it meant was we could put more limestone and rocks into the water supply. <laughs> it's a technical solution. Oh, it works. <laughs> It's horrible for people's oh, absolutely. And yeah. it, it is important to note that the water we're supplying is still within the water standards. Yeah. Uh, it's just unfortunately the effects what, what, within the household in terms of um, yeah. Within, yeah. what role in the long run with the reason why we don't have a last year on the other year? And so there has been quite a lot of changes in the pH and some of the um, equipment hasn't performed as it should. Okay, moving on. Um, would someone like to um, move that we receive the excellent item report? Rebecca and oh, Rob. Right. Now you've all got it in front of you. I think it was self explanatory, but we <coughs> no doubt want a little bit more commentary around the office. <laughs> I'm just wondering, some of these seem to be open, but um, at, to like 12th of the 2nd, 2020, no, like this is for number 81, um, to be placed on a policy review schedule for 2020 for the purpose of checking consistency. Does it still need to remain open or have we not done that? We have another policy. Uh, so I'm due to report to the Finance Audit and Risk Committee on the program of the review or our um, regulatory policies, bylaws, and any other of our um, non regulatory policies so that's due in six weeks' time. So, in just case uh, there are a number of, uh, of those instruments that are due for renewal and for the review, so mm. it's just a case of um, just prioritising which should come so, so a lot of these actions, once that's done as well, will be closed, okay, well, won't they? Because they're, yeah, okay, that's all right. So they need to be there until such time. And, until they're closed. Yeah, yeah, I just couldn't understand why I thought, I thought we had policy I think I think 591 uh, can be closed, can't it? I think that's been installed uh, solar lighting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll be very interested in 693 from Wellington Water, which they mentioned this morning uh, on the actual effectiveness of leak, leak repairs in Greytown. And I think they were concentrating on Greytown initially. It was because that was for the ice leaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What percentage of the reticulated water is leaking? So I, I don't know what the, the I mean, I've heard various numbers um, suggested, um, but it's certainly some reductions from where it was. But that, that's yeah, we'll, we'll get the update from Jerry because we're getting a bit more uh, up to date, up to date update. No other issues around the action report. Right, we will move on to B4. Okay, tell us the residents and great parts association. Now, this was delivered to us at the, uh, by Kim Donna. Um, right, here we go. <coughs> I guess we could we just um, receive the yeah, Could uh, someone move the Rebecca and Karen? Thank you. Uh, yes, I think I have a good read through it, Ewan, and it pretty well covers the topics that they uh, rose at that meeting. And 
But I had a white artist waiting in a, in a two or three weeks' time, wondering whether I could talk to her about that. Yeah. Maybe need a bit of time. I mean, since we can't do it, it's actually a special funding from the LTV. It's sort of that we can secure that as it's transient for some of the dates around it, but it's um, okay. Yeah, I think I can work on that. Um, because all they really want to know that we are taking notice yeah. of the events. I've just spoken to them briefly. Um, they're quite happy with it, but they want to say it right. So okay. I'll, this, is, this is a wonderful report for that. Oh, absolutely. It's yes. really yes. good. So, um, I guess there's no, because this is made public, I can um, get them a copy of this. There's no issues around that. Can I, can I just ask something? Um, that's with regards to the um, eco reef system, and I was just wondering when that's, uh, how that's pro yeah, well, progressing. There's a few hurdles to jump yet. Yeah. Like? Uh, so we, uh, we're in the process of drafting our um, environmental plan, where our consent was to have a plan around um, a more detailed analysis of the impacts of the environmental aspects. Um, so that's in progress. Process, sorry, of uh, being drafted. There is a meeting scheduled on site for engineers and, and the likes to sit down and say, "Is that going to work?" That's what it looks like. Um, I think that's the next couple of weeks, um, and pods in through April and May, so they're in place for winter. Right. Um, we're also aware that we need to make sure uh, local Kiwi and other interested parties are involved in that process as well. So making sure that those people are invited to site to discuss any concerns or issues. That May, may I recommend um, on the Māori Standing Committee then um, Karen Nikaira, uh, because her, her family uh, um, have, have very, very strong affiliations out there. Um, and also... Um, uh, Suzanne. Yeah, yeah, Suzanne and Teresa Mapuru, um, just for regards to Koinui. So um, all three of them would be wonderful and, and be able to contact others that you may, you know, wish to wish to discuss it with. Well, I've got them on my list, but I have to carry on you. So then what's this part of the consent process? There was concern around um, one of the sites. Uh, so we're only doing two of the three proposed sites. There was some concern around um, uh, uh, the spatial, but also as well, uh, whether there were any um, artifacts and stuff that would be disturbed as part of that process. Mm. And we dropped that site completely and I just focused on two discourses. Uh, there's a trial of the concept. Yeah. Well, I just saw uh, there was uh, because uh, there was also a concern with the fact that it's not natural, you know, like it's, uh, in other words, it's not meant to be there um, because it's uh, man made. But um, there, there was something of um, was what they're doing um, around like Sydney Harbour oh, yeah. in, in Australia, where they've um, done something very similar, where they've oh, yeah. uh, put it up along the walls. And although it's not, it's, it's actually bringing back a lot of the uh, frustration. Yeah, the frustration coming back to well, they, the use. Well, they did it if they had hollow and different. small little yeah, pieces. Yeah, and, that's right. That's right. But the the design of this, I could see that being very very similar. And so um, the, it, it was just something I wanted to. One of the big parts <laughs> of this, the higher up pods mm. can be planted in, uh, in natives yeah. uh, that are, you know, growing on that. Yeah, yeah. But just aside from that, um, next Tuesday, I have the Iwi Dock Regional Council and Tim coming at home because we have an issue with our river that kept heading north for some reason because of Panels like that, but it should go south. But, and it will compromise the integrity of that bridge. But more importantly, it's taking in out, out a lot of uh, time. Uh, it's taken some out already. Yeah, okay. Uh, I've got Heritage New Zealand coming out. Um, is Harmy involved at all? Oh, yeah, they're all coming. But okay. um, the thing is, we're using, going to use these pods. Because these are pods that have a better application yes. in the river than in the sea, because the sea is just yeah. Yeah. And the river, what you're trying to do is persuade the river to go one way. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a, a, a very intelligent groin. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's interesting, I was going to Frank Wake several times over this, and I've seen quite regularly, but 
he made a big wave pool bigger than this in his workshop, and he's actually changed the wave pool to reflect a river rather than the ocean. Right. Oh, oh cool. And, uh, you know, it's just really just yeah, not so putting a wall up. I mean, look, look, it's a really clever idea, and I just think that it's... Um, well, uh, <laughs> anything. The, uh, anything can do to help that area. Region, regional council are very keen on the hub river because bold as you can get there. But, and boulders do. Well, they have to wait till we've got it in place first. So anyway, look, I can sort of add to that, but I, I will tell you how I get on with it. But more importantly, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, you're just on that bio, but it can be that across the whole yeah, not just not just on the coast. Uh, yes, so we um set aside some money in this year's uh, and plan to work on the Freedom Cup bylaw because our bylaws, as you know, are restricted to uh camping and coastal areas, which does not allow us to have any restrictions uh, outside of those areas. So we're looking to um have our camping a freedom camping bylaw with the Islands will fall away. Uh, so you should imagine that's a big piece of work that we need to program mm -hmm. with the other region three um, island reviews. And they will go across the whole region? Yes, yeah. across the district. District, yeah. Well, no, 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 that's not the region. Yeah. No. Unfortunately, not. No. <laughs> I mean, just easy to what you're saying. Uh, I just don't agree with what you're saying. It's very confusing. Across the board, <coughs> right. We will happy with that. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's for the little campus. Um, right. Would someone like to move? We go to do um, public activities. I'll move that. Yeah. Right now, we will ask to see see a market. Um, Okay. We go go to see one soon. Oh, chuck it to us. Should we go see one or see two? Uh, 